Hello. I'm speaking to you this evening um, because I'm really still very unhappy by the campaign by the member of the European Parliament, Hannah Newman. She spoke only a couple of days ago in the European Parliament and basically she explained that she wanted to revoke the generalised scheme of preferences uh, plus tariff, if you like, and this is something that is um, enables developing countries, including the Philippines, to benefit from trade charges or trade relief, i.e. they can import goods into the European Union uh, without import duties, and this is to help developing countries. Now, the reason why this was started was obviously to help countries who needed that lift, who needed that boost. This has helped to provide much needed jobs for many Filipinos. In order to produce these goods and these things that are being sent to the EU. And of course right now we're in the middle of a global pandemic and the Filipino people are suffering. This is not for want of trying by the government. They have the social amoration program or the SAP program and many different incentives. But people have to realise there are 110 million Filipinos and maybe up to 30 or 40 percent of them are in poverty. So if you want to do the maths, this means the government had to provide for 40 million people. Maybe it's less than that. I don't know the exact figures. But all I can say is they, they borrowed money so that they could help the people. And the money that they have given is still not enough to cover ev any, everything. But they've tried their best. They've tried to help the people through this relief scheme. And right now there are a great number of difficulties in the Philippines due to a rising cases of COVID. Although the government has a plan in place to deal with COVID, the fact is if the cases continue to rise, there'll be a need to have even more of a lockdown. And that means it's going to be even harder for Filipinos to find work. And there you had this scheme, which is very useful right now, which means that if the Philippines imports goods into the EU, then the, the manufacturers are not having to pay those duties on those imports. So when Hannah Newman said Duterte enjoys this GSP+, plus, President Duterte personally doesn't get any money out of this. He doesn't get any tax relief out of this. This is not going into the president's pocket. In fact, the president is a very honest, sincere leader. These funds are going into the pockets of the Filipino people. And by doing what she's done and by convincing the EU to uh, carry out this harsh sanction or this harsh penalty against the Filipino people, she is robbing the Filipino people and stealing food out of the mouths of the Filipino people because this is not a benefit for the president. This is a benefit for the people. Any sanction against a country will affect the people. And you know, not everybody supports President Duterte and I understand that. Personally, I think he's doing a great job under difficult circumstances. That's my view, and of course people are welcome to have their own view. But all I would say is, why did this MEP, who lives 7,000 miles away from the Philippines, who has no connection with the Philippines whatsoever, probably has no family there and no interest there, why has she made it even more difficult for Filipinos, even more of a struggle for the Filipino people? And you know what? The way that she's found out about this or the way that she's heard about the struggles of the Filipino people 
and her interpretation of what's going on is through a interview or a conversation she had with Rappler CEO Maria Ressa some three months ago, which I've also watched on YouTube. Now, Maria Ressa would give her version of the events of what she thought was happening in the Philippines. She would speak about a lack of democracy. She would speak about so-called EJKs that actually don't really exist because the president has never paid anyone to kill anybody and neither has the government. This is my personal view, which I think I'm allowed to express. Maria Ressa was found guilty of a case. It was a, a, a private prosecution by a businessman in the Philippines, Wilfredo King. And uh, there was a uh, mention in Rappler uh, a long time ago now, maybe some years ago, where Wilfredo King was implemented in something untoward. I don't know the exact circumstances, but the fact is, Wilfredo King is a private businessman. Nobody's the president hasn't gone to this man and said, why don't you prosecute Maria Ressa? No, this has been going on for a very long time. And even the administration, the Duterte administration, even lawyers in the Duterte administration have said this particular law shouldn't actually be a criminal law. But the fact is, it, it is. You can't blame President Duterte for that. You can't blame the Philippine justice system for that. You know, this is not a made-up case. This was a legitimate case. And Maria Ressa lost that legitimate case. Yes, there are other cases against her, but what she was talking about in this instance was this case that she said was made up. But it's not made up. That's completely untrue. It happened. It happened. There was something written in Rappler that this private businessman objected to. And then there's the issue over taxes, there's the issue over foreign ownership. You know, the fact is, the Rappler News website wasn't complying with uh, these things. And this is under the Philippine Constitution, whichever way you look at it, everyone who operates a business in the Philippines needs to operate the business according to the Philippine Constitution until the time that that constitution is changed. So to Hannah Newman, I don't know if you feel proud of yourself now because I know the EU Parliament have um, uh, accepted your resolution and they've also voted for an investigation to take place. Now the thing is, the Philippines is doing well at the moment in terms of the Build, Build, Build program, in terms of the economy before the pandemic, in terms of how the Filipino people are feeling about things, in terms of how the president's doing. You know, President Duterte has an 80% satisfaction rating. You show me any other world leader across the world, throughout Europe, through uh, uh, America, Britain, any other country who has a rating of that amount. Stephen Secor said this in an interview where he had with Maria Ressa previously, and he said other world leaders would give their right arm to have a satisfaction rating anywhere near that. So, you know, this is a video of my personal opinion. I would hopefully request and respect that people refrain from using bad language on my um, YouTube account, but I really do hope that this message gets to Hannah Newman and this message gets to the EU. This is not a time to be meddling with the Philippines. This is not a time to be imposing sanctions against a country that is already struggling. This is not a time for making it harder for Filipino businesses to operate. This is a time where the EU should be helping the Philippines. This is a time where the Filipino people need assistance. You know, I know that the Philippine government right now is not crying out to Europe for help or anything like that, but it shouldn't need to. 
at this time, the EU should be helping the Filipino people and helping the Philippine government and not condemning it. Thank you.